So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to connect to Microsoft Flight Sim. So now Microsoft Flight Sim and Little Nav Map are linked. I'm going to zoom in on the airport. I'm going to pick a gate for departure. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so I'll pick um, gate 24 right here and that's automatically starting to create a flight plan over here you can open and close that window with uh, this one flight planning dock window now we have to pick a runway and if I put my mouse over there I can see the preferred runway is 33 so I'm going to pick runway 33 but that doesn't mean it's going to give me runway 33. It could give me runway 15. I don't know. So runway 33. Um, you can just click here and select that as your departure. That's the preferred runway. And if you click here, you can see the weather. And the wind is blowing in this direction, so that's a good runway to take off from. So we're going to go out, taxi to our right, go down and take off. Unless they give us this runway. In which case, I'll just follow their uh, whatever they say. But anyway, I think we're going to be okay here. Um, so, we've got a departure there. And uh, I want to go down to um, this airport here. And I want to pick this runway here regardless. Uh, the wind is blowing in this direction. But I'm going to pick this runway. And I don't know how hard it's blowing. Um, I, if I hold my mouse right over the icon here, let me just get the wind barb off here. Hold that over. So it says the wind is blowing at 12 knots. So probably the preferred runway would be uh, runway 29, but runway 29 is not um, an ILS approach. So I'm going to pick this one anyway and see what happens if we uh, are still able to use it so uh, the ILS frequency is 110.10 megahertz so I'm going to uh, that's runway 11 one, one. so I'm going to pick that as our destination and uh, select runway 11 so now it's giving us that airport as a and there's the uh, flight plan that's been created um, if I click here I can see the elevation uh, it's we're flying too low at 3,000 feet but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fly like here's the riverbed here so probably lower elevation so I'm going to see if I can um, take off and fly. I'm just going to click there. I'm going to make a manual flight plan. I'm going to use that waypoint there. And it's added it. And I'm also uh, going to, so there's our elevation now. So it looks like now we're high enough, but still this is uh, sort of a mountainous area. So what I want to do is uh, click again and, and go down to um, this waypoint here. and it added that waypoint. Now our elevation, we're clearing uh, everything quite nicely and we're lined up pretty good for the runway. But if we really want to get lined up well, I could take this waypoint here. That's pretty much right on uh, a nice approach. So I'm going to use that and uh, I could have clicked on here and also said calculate, adjust the height and calculate but and have these boxes tick but I'm going to go with a manual flight plan I just want to fly at um, 3,000 feet so now I'm just going to save that say save and it'll write overwrite anything else and I'm also going to export it as a Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 flight plan it knows where to save it in the folders so if you've already been working on a similar flight plan and you've updated it now and made some changes, you just say yes to overwrite it. All right, so there's our flight plan. 
Uh, not too long a flight and I am looking at our elevation and it looks okay. This uh, feather is turned on. When you right click on uh, the elevation profile box you, you can add stuff like this to your flight plan like top of climb, top of descent which are showing up, top of climb, top of descent and the feather uh, for when I reach there and I should be picking up the ILS frequency for that runway. So I'm going to close that down right now. So there's our flight plan and we've exported it now. So I'm going to close that window, close this down. I'm going to close this as well because we didn't do the calculation. We just did it manually. So now how do we get that into Microsoft Flight Sim? If I click on this window, the nav map's going to disappear because right now the mouse and the keyboard is being used by a little nav map. So if I click here, it now transfers them over. So right now I wouldn't be able to use my mouse like pressing buttons inside the aircraft or my keyboard like G for gear up as long as the little nav map's up because that's disabled. But once I click here, now my mouse and keyboard are fine. Now, as far as the joystick goes, I'm using a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Um, that's not really affected if little nav maps up. You can still use all your buttons and controls on your joystick. So let's uh, bring up by pressing space more, load, load this uh, from this PC. And there is the um, flight plan we just created. So I'm going to say open. And now there it has been imported and you can see those are the waypoints I actually picked so everything looks good uh, departure destination etc so we can hit fly um, I'm not I'm just going to uh, well it's going to be an ILS approach but I'm not going to change anything here I've got instrument flight rules low altitude here uh, the the runway I think we picked was 11 ILS 11 I, so I can click on that I don't think that's going to hurt anything there we go okay so I'm going to hit fly okay here we are at Mostar Airport ready to fly I'm going to click there and I'm going to go through the checklist uh, it's got an extensive checklist, as you can see. It takes you all the way to securing the aircraft right at the end after you land. So, um, very nice to use and very educational if you're not familiar with this plane. So, let's do the pre flight. And I'm going to hit evaluation so aircraft we can see what's documents. happening. So, I tick item. Check. Parking brake. That's on. Set. Ignition. Off. Avionics switch bus 1 and bus 2. Off. Master switch alt and bat. Okay, I'm going to turn those on. On. Primary flight display PFD. Check on. Fuel quantity indicators. Just going to tick Check. that item. LOW fuel L and LOW fuel are enunciators. Off. Oil pressure annunciator. Check on. Low vacuum annunciator. Check on. Avionics switch bus one. Okay, so um, we're going to turn that on. on. Forward avionics fan. Check fan is heard. So just listen avionics to the fan. Avionics switch bus one. Off. Off. Avionics switch bus two. On. Aft avionics fan. Check fan is heard. Okay. Avionics switch bus two. Off. Pito heat. On check working. Pito heat. Off. Low volts annunciator. Check on. Master switch alt and bat. Off. Elevator trim. Okay, we're going to adjust take that. Off position. To Fuel take selector. Off position. Fuel. Both. Both. Static Down pressure below. alt source valve. Off. Okay, so that checklist is done. Now before starting the engine, 
pre-flight inspection. Pre-flight inspection complete. Seats belts adjust and lock. Brakes test and set. Circuit breakers. These are all, all inoperative, but the they're pushed. Equipment. Off. Avionics switch bus one and bus two. Off. Fuel selector. Both. Both. Fuel shut off valve. Open. Okay. All right. So that completes that page. So now let's start the engine. Throttle. Quarter. Open a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Mixture. Okay. Idle cutoff. STBY that switch. Hold for 20 seconds. Test hold for 20 seconds. STBY that switch. So we're going to arm that. Arm verify that PFD comes on. Engine indicating system. Check parameters. Bus E volts. Check 24 volts minimum. M bus volts. Check 1.5 volts or less. Fat S amps. Check verify discharge. STBY that enunciator. Check on. Propeller area. Clear. Clear. Master switch alt and bat. On. Beacon. On. Mixture. So we're going to rich. set the mixture to rich. AUX fuel pump. Okay. Three to five seconds. On three to five seconds, then off. Mixture. Okay, we need the mixture lean. Okay, we'll tick item. Ready to break. Ignition. Okay, and just rotate your mouse on this key. Start. Mixture. Should, should start the props. Should get your uh, mixture correct here. Rich when engine starts. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, didn't start. So let's try that again. Let's try. Um, okay, I'm just going to go down to. The uh, magneto here. Try turning that again. There we go. Let's have a look now. Okay, it's running. So let's just go down here. Uh, so the mixture, uh, let's have a look at that. Should be uh, in. Mixture pole to make it lean, and let's just see what it says there. Rich when engine starts, so that's that looks good. So now, after starting engine, we are going to um, throttle. Get the throttle going. So. I'm just using the throttle on the joystick here. Yeah, so you just adjust it until you get it okay. So. Adjust 1000 RPM. Oil pressure. Okay. Check. Check. Amps M, BAT, and BAT S. Check verify charge shown. Low volts enunciator. Check off. Avionics switch bus 1 and bus 2. On. Flaps. They're up. up. So I can control the flaps using my joystick button. 
So now we're going to taxi out and uh, what I want to do is take a look inside this aircraft and uh, this should be on uh, GPS. I'm going to set that right now just by clicking the CDI button. It's probably going to be in the checklist anyway coming up. But two here. Uh, to get the screen on, uh, your map screen, it says press enter or right mouse soft key to continue. So um, I'm just going to press enter. And you can see here that it's going to have us taking off in that direction and turning around and going back. It's what it looks like. So I'm just going to zoom in here with this. Yeah, so it wants us to take off sort of uh, here, but I'm going to go down a little further and take off. Because if we take off there, we might miss this um, waypoint. Normally you'd go all the way down here. So let's. that's the runway that we've been given. So going to go back here control one gives us that screen and I'm going to go up to taxi checklist and we are going to taxi light as required landing light I'll turn as it on required. strobe strobe on navigation lights on parking brake release Make sure your throttle's brakes. down. Okay, just going to test the brakes just by using my joystick. Test. Rudder. Test. Okay, we are ready to go. Run up is next, so I'm just. So, what's nice about uh, the Garmin? G1000 is you can see your terrain, the runway, and then you also have a very nice map here. So you can see we're going to take off and come around back here, and then we're going to go that way. So that's based on the flight plan we created and imported. Um, so we have this done. Um, I'm going to do another checklist here. Uh, this is before takeoff. Uh, run no this is run up okay so let's just do that parking brake set okay so um, what I'm going to do is um, just hang on for a second we'll just go out here and get ready Okay, so let's try this. Um, okay, so parking brake. Parking brake. So we want set. that set. Pilot and passenger seat backs. Most upright position. Seats belts. Check secure. Doors. Closed and locked. Flight controls. So you can use your joystick to test that they're free and correct. Free and correct. Flight instruments PFD. Well, everything looks good here. Check no red X's. Altimeter PFD. Now to set the altimeter, set just arrow. just prep B on Stand your keyboard. See, so just change there. Alt cell. So the alt, I'm just, uh, we've got it set to 3000. Set. Stand by flight instruments. Check. Okay. Fuel quantity indicators. Looks good. I'll tick that. Check. Mixture. Should rich. be rich. Fuel selector. Both. Autopilot. Yeah. Okay. It's saying to engage autopilot. I'll engage it. I'm not engage. sure if that's correct or not. Normally Flight I do controls. that after I take off. So you can use your joystick to check Move that. AP. A slash P trim disc button. 
Autopilot trim this button, AP. Press. Flight director. Uh, let's take a look at the flight director here. Um, we want that off. off. Elevator trim. Um, okay. Let's get back to the checklist again. Okay. Let's go to elevator trim. Okay. Elevator trim. Set for takeoff. Okay, throttle. Throttle. And then our magnetos. So we're going to go to 1800. Just use your joystick Magnetos. throttle. Magnetos. 150 RPM max decrease. Magnetos. Your uh, throttle to idle. Yeah, right here. Okay. Adjust your throttle now to get a thousand. Right here. Okay, so that's the run up before takeoff. Calm frequencies. They're set. That's being done by the um, co pilot and in my settings, turned on for that to set. be handled. NAV frequencies. So this is where we're going to set uh, the frequency. Now, to get to, to move from one to the other, just right click and you can see this will go up or down. If I change this, for example, we needed uh, 11010. So I'm just going to scroll there and make that 110. And then this one will change the other one. So that's 11010. Same as this. Um, but I'm just going to show you. If I click, that's moved up to there. Now, if I want to get that active, I just hit there. And now that's the active frequency. So that's the frequency we have to set for NAV1 for that runway at uh, Mostar that we're headed to. Uh, or I should say uh, Salipi. I think that's our destination. Yeah, Mostar, I think we're departing from there. Set. FMS slash GPS flight plan. Okay, so that looks good. As desired. XPDR. Right there. Um, this tick. Set. CDI soft key. Ah, uh, so that's the nav source. That would be, uh, let's just tick item. Select NAV source. Yeah, we need to select Cabin PWR GPS. 12 V switch. Off. Okay. Flaps. Zero to ten degrees. I'm just going to put them down Cabin to ten windows. degrees. I just did my joystick. Cabin windows. Closed and locked. Parking brake. Now we have to release it. Release. Okay, so for takeoff, there's what we're going to have to do. I've got the flaps down, and uh, our fuel mixture throttle. Um, the fuel mixture should be rich. Let's just check and make sure. 
Yeah, so it's uh, pull for lean and in for rich. So we're good. Um, so I think uh, everything else is pretty good. We're going to bring up the flaps when we get above 300 feet. So we're going to take off now. And I'm going to give us a better view. And we can also bring up a little nav map for the takeoff if you want. So here we go. Just going to zoom out a little bit here. So you can see our uh, indicators coming up on our speed gauge telling us when to rotate and lift off and when we get up to 300 feet we're going to have to uh, bring up those flaps. So right away I want to go inside the aircraft and I want to click on here and control one will bring up this screen. So I want to set the autopilot and the nav system on. And I also want to hit vertical speed up because I want to start climbing. And the flight director is already on. So I'm just going to leave that. This barometric pressure, I'm going to check it again just to make sure everything's okay. And let's have a look. Okay, so we should be following our flight plan. But I have to make sure nav's on there. Autopilot is on. So the airplane's just picked up, uh, let's go to uh, the map screen here. So you can see here's where we are. The aircraft's turning to follow our flight plan. And there's our RPMs. We can cut that back just a little bit so we don't get into too high RPMs. We want to be around 250. 2540, somewhere around there. You know, between 2,000 and, and 2,500. The green is ideal. Okay, so I'm just going to um, just take a look inside the aircraft for a second. Control 1 gives you this view. So we've already seen some of this stuff being used. Uh, in our uh, checklist. Uh, control 2 will give you the map screen. Now you can zoom in and out with the map. And also sometimes this range thing will work by doing that. And sometimes it doesn't work. I'm not sure why it fails sometimes, but it does. So here we go. We're taking off here, then we're swinging around here to pick up this waypoint and coming back again. That's purely because um, when it was imported, uh, the flight plan uh, requested to take off in that direction. So I, I went with it because if we took off in the opposite direction, we probably missed some of these waypoints. And then what happens is uh, you have a discontinuity and you have to start using the direct to button, which is right here and uh, and here as well. and. If you click on it, you can. Uh, I'm just going to go over to the screen so it worked. When you click on it, you could fly direct to that if you hit um, enter and then activate. So we don't have any alerts. So the aircraft is following the flight plan, and we're on GPS autopilot, and vertical speed is still working because we haven't reached our altitude yet. So I am going to hit control three which brings up these uh, things on our screen. Here's our trim. We were using the throttle and um, mixture. And control four brings up, uh, these are inoperable. But you get your parking brake, which you can turn on and off. Control five will give you uh, your trim your fuel valve, uh, your fuel selector, it's on both right now. And control six, 
um, backs off your view. This is on the keyboard, uh, holding the control key down and pressing the number 7 now. Get a view out the window, the number 8, the side view. And the number 9 will bring us back. Okay, so we reached our altitude. You can see it's shut off now and it's not vertical speed anymore. It's, it's, it's just uh, notifying us that we reached our altitude here. Just about to anyway. So I'm just going to hit that right mouse button and move that up there. So control one will bring up that screen. So there's the frequency for the runway we're going to, like I said. So let's go to a little nav map here and zoom out, bring it up on the whole screen. And you can see we're following that. So yeah, it's the destination is Salipi and the airport we took off was uh, Molstar. So some of these aircraft here are, um, that's a generic, but you get them on and off just by doing this. So if you want to see other aircraft, even uh, real aircraft that might be in the vicinity, like these ones, you, it gives the name of the aircraft. There's an Emirates aircraft there that you just saw momentarily. This one is a generic. So you can turn them on and off with this, but I like them on. And it'll also give you about, if you have boats, uh, you, you turn that on and you'll see them. Okay, so once again, here's our elevation. You can see we've reached it, and the aircraft is traveling in that direction. So we just reached top of climb right now. And wherever you are on there, you'll see this blue circle. Look at the little nav map there. And the circle will be wherever you are on the flight plan. So there's a feather I have turned on. You can just right click on uh, the elevation window. And you can show your ILS or GLS. And you can show top of climb, top of descent. And these other things are clicked to show as well. I'm going to turn that off now. Looks like everything's good. Okay, and I'm going to downsize that. All right, so there's our uh, other standby uh, instruments. And they all look pretty good. These look like these knobs are inoperable because we have the Garmin system in here, so they, they didn't really make these functional. All right, so now it's just a matter of following our flight plan and seeing if everything goes well, and if we can do a, uh, an approach and landing. I'm just going to see if I can uh, bring up the map screen here and scroll out when we get a little closer. Yeah, it, it looks like it's flying right into the runway we asked for, but I'm not sure about this this line here. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You see this? We should be flying up here, turning and going in and landing. So I'm not sure if this is um, an approach uh, type of path that uh, it imported. We'll find out when we get there. We'll see what happens. It should turn here and start flying towards the airport. Yeah, there's the waypoints that we, we, we requested. And we've got runway um, 11 showing up here. And that's the runway that's ILS that we requested. So, you know, everything looks good. I wasn't sure because of the wind if it uh, Microsoft might have actually changed that as a preferred runway. It might have taken the preferred runway, which really doesn't have an ILS. 
Okay, so let's just uh, get that back there. Click on here, zoom out, and take a look outside the aircraft at the terrain. So I'm going to go Control 1 to get back to my primary screen here. And click on this to get the pilot's view. And then click the side button so I can see what's going on outside. So you can see because of the waypoints we picked, we're following uh, along some of the uh, lower altitude uh, terrain. Get a little nav map up. Yeah, some of these mountains are a little on the high side, so they might have been a bit of a challenge. So if we hold it over our own aircraft, we should be able to get the data on our plane itself here. There we go. We see it's a Cessna C-172. It's an ass here. It's a Skyhawk G-1000. Flight number 616. Transponder code 7575. Type C-172. Class. CNAS, or registration I should say, CNAS, and model Cessna. So it shows our altitude, it shows our ground speed, it shows indicated speed. So that's that's the nice thing about little nav map. The other thing too is it also shows um, the names of places you're flying over, streets, lakes, rivers, like this little town, you wouldn't normally know what it is, but having a little nav map is great. And also, if you compare what you're seeing on the ground to what uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is showing you, you can see that it's, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim has done a good job of rendering um, the landscape that you're flying over, buildings, uh, etc. So like right now, we're flying over this river. And there's the name of the river. Well, that's pretty cool. A little bridge crossing here. So let's uh, take a look at the plane itself. So if you hold your right mouse button, you can actually hold it and change your angle of view and get a really good look at things. There's the moon, crescent moon up here. So if I zoom in, with my wheel, I can uh, take a look at uh, the co-pilot and the captain, which is us flying the plane. So it's very nicely rendered. There's a little P-TOT instrument on the outside there, below the wing. So let's just take a look underneath. You can see the wheels. So you can see they've done a really nice job of uh, rendering this plane and making it look very authentic right down to the rivets and everything that are on the plane I think it's uh, very well done and creates a, a really nice um, realistic experience so this information you can customize in your settings when you select the aircraft. You can uh, put this on, this tail information, and give it a flight number, which I did. And I just called it NAS Air, the airline. All right, let's go back inside and have a look at our instruments and our flight plan here. Control 2. I'm just going to zoom in again. Okay. Just going to bring up a little nav map here. So this is what we asked for.
right there. So you see this line that's here um, doesn't show up in a uh, little nav map, so I'm not really sure. Maybe somebody might know why that is uh, on there. Put it in your comments down below if you know. Um, people that are used to flying this aircraft might be familiar with that, the reason for that happening. But like I said, it might have something to do with the approach for that runway. You know, that might be a typical approach that normally an aircraft would come in on. You can check your barometric pressure periodically just by pressing B. Now there's your heading bug. To change your heading bug you can just scroll on this wheel. That's operative. And um, it's another way you can follow your flight plan. If uh, the GPS isn't working for some reason, the nav system's not working. So you could actually put that right on uh, the direction you need to head. And if you hit heading here, it'll take nav off and it'll start following the heading that you're setting. So you can actually just uh, steer the aircraft in the right heading just by doing that uh, with the autopilot on, of course. So I'm just going to let this run for the duration of the flight. Uh, if you find it a little bit long, you can just move forward um, to where we're getting uh, an approach. And then we'll go through those procedures. So let's take a look at our checklist here. Uh, in route climb, uh, that's all been done. So let's just uh, check our lights here. Yeah, we don't need our landing lights and taxi lights on now. right here. If you're above a thousand feet, you can turn those off. So these other things are, are going fine. So I'm just looking at cruise now, this checklist. Power, elevator trim is set. The autopilot's taking care of that. The mixture of fuel should be lean. Lean for altitude, it, but we're not very high. So let's just see what it's on. It's still, you can lean, you can make it a little leaner if you want. And uh, let's see, um, engine gauge check. Everything looks fine. And the flight management system GPS, let's just have a look at that. Yeah, that's looking good. So we've turned here at this waypoint, and we are now heading in the right direction. Okay, so that all looks good. Uh, so we've basically finished that. I'm going to go to for descent. You're going to do your power. Uh, you're going to adjust your mixture. Your altimeter, you're going to recheck. And... Um, altitude, make sure it's set right. Um, you're going to select your nav source and the flight management system review, fuel selector, both flaps as desired for landing. So let's just um, go over here and turn on this nav one. When we get close enough we should pick up the frequency for that runway and we'll know we're close enough to um, set the nav source. I'm just going to close that down for now. Bring up a little nav map, see how we're doing. Okay. So we're doing fine. There's some other aircraft. There's an Air West airline, and there's another one. That's generic this aircraft here. Let's see about this one. 
Yeah, it says ge generic as well. So this one doesn't say generic. It's, it says BAW637 Airbus A20 EO, I guess. Okay, so there's uh, top of descent. When we get to there, we're going to be descending. Well, that's when we reach that feather. When we get to here, that's that other line that it's streaking out from the runway, and yeah, we're probably going to intercept the line up with it. So let's just go outside and have a look. I'm going to descend a little bit when we get closer. I'm going to go down to 2,500 feet. I don't want to be too high and uh, fly over top of the glide slope. So you can see we're getting some wind here buffeting us around quite a bit. Some updrafts off of these mountains. Let's have a look inside. It's 21 degrees Celsius outside right now, which is uh, for those of you that uh, it's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit for those that use Fahrenheit. So right now we have autopilot on, the nav on, and I've hit the localizer by using this button right here. And the plane is now tracking towards it to line up. And we are getting pretty close, so I'm going to hit approach shortly as well. Okay, so let's just take a look at the little nav map here. So, right here, I should be able to hit approach. So I'm going to do that right now. Uh, so we'll get a little nav map off. I'm going to hit approach. And we have uh, still uh, tracking the localizer one, which is lined up nicely with this frequency. You can see it's gone green here. And also, you can see we have a G here and a little diamond that's coming down, green diamond. When it hits here, we should pick up the glide slope. And this should go green right here. So we're getting real close. We're probably a little bit underneath the glide slope right now. But you're better to be underneath it than uh, above it. If you're too high, you're going to fly right over it and miss it. So we're just about there. And it just turned green. You see right there? So now we are descending uh, with the autopilot on. I'm going to put the flaps down. And I'm going to decrease the speed. Now, I might have put the flaps down a little bit early there. I think you're probably better to be in this range here before you put your flaps down. Especially if you're putting them down more than 10%. So I'm going to try and control my speed here using my joystick. But you can see we're descending here. So we're right on the glide slope. So let's just do this checklist here and see for normal landing. Flaps down. Your speed should be around 60 or 70. So we're okay there. Okay. And touch down your main gear first, they're saying. Landing roll. Lower nose gently. Okay, so that's what we'll try and do. I'm going to keep my speed up here between 60 and 70.
So that's a pretty good speed. And you can see that uh, we're still descending here. So everything's working fine. And right here we're lined up perfectly with the localizer. We can bring up a little nav map. We'll be able to see where we are on the uh, airport runway and where the parking gates are, etc. with a little nav map on. Okay. Okay, I'm going to cut my speed a little bit here. This is indicating that we are lined up pretty good with the runway. Like it's a little difficult to tell sometimes using um, this view with you. Let's just look inside here and go like this. Okay, so we should be, the, the autopilot should, should be bringing us in on a proper descent. So once again, I'm going a little bit fast because we're descending. So I'm just going to cut back a bit with my throttle on my joystick. Okay. So you can take your autopilot off. Just gently touch down as gently as you can. Oh, somebody taken off there. Isn't that nice? Okay. Fortunately, we uh, didn't intersect them while they were on the runway. So let's just have a look outside here. Bring up your flaps. And I'm just going to head over here and get off the runway. I'm going to exit as soon as I can, which is right here. Alright. Just going to stop and see if they actually... If those blue uh, arrows come on, that means they've assigned us a parking spot. So here we are at uh, Salipi. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a correct pronunciation, but C-I-L-I-P-I. -I. Okay, there. There's our runway assigned. I'm going to bring up a little nav map. Um, so let's just uh, bring up our checklist. And after landing, flaps up, landing light as required, taxi light as required, strobe off. So let's go inside. Okay, so let's uh, flaps her up. We're going to auto complete anyway. Flaps. Up. Okay. Landing light. Yeah, we don't need that As on required. there. Taxi light. We'll leave that on. Strobe. As required. Yeah, we're gonna turn that. Strobe. Off. Elevator trim. Reset to neutral. Transponder. Stand by. Okay, so strobe off taxi. What's this? Nav lights. Um, I think we could turn the nav lights off now, too. Okay, let's uh, bring up uh, parking is next. And then we're going to secure. So let's um, you bring up a little nav and uh, go to our parking spot. Just going to zoom in. So there we are there on the runway. So 
we're just going to follow those arrows. And see where they are putting us. I had uh, air traffic control turned off because um, often it becomes uh, rather distracting to try and listen to them and do a little tutorial on one of these aircraft. So you can see a little nav map is keeping us centered there so we can see where we're going. And uh, you can see that there's airplanes wherever they say there are. That's kind of interesting. Just going to go move that over there. Aircraft there. Looks like they're putting us right over here, which is probably gate nineteen. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say, but I'm not sure. It might be past there. Hopefully these aircraft aren't in the way. Okay, we are going to swing around and come in right here. So I'm just going to move this out of the way, move it over to here, and just follow this guy's instructions. Looks like we're going into gate 21 here. Let's come forward. Looks like we're doing okay. Okay, so he wants us to go a little further, but I mean, I'll just do it until he puts his things in. Okay, for some reason, uh, normally they just shut down. But anyway, here we are. We're right in our spot. And what I'm going to do is put on the parking brake for now. And uh, let's uh, take a look at where we are on the airport here. Right here, yeah. He brought us in a little too far. But I'm not going to do a pushback or anything, but there's our parking spot right there. And also, um, I'm just going to secure the aircraft. So, let's just close that down and do that checklist. Let's bring it over to here so I can work with it. Okay, so. Parking brake. Set. Avionics switch bus one and bus two. Off. Engine idle. Check 600 to 650 RPM. Magnetos. Okay. Cut off test. Mixture. Okay, um, for some reason it jumps here. Uh, mixture, autocomplete. Idle cutoff. Yeah. Good. So now we're going to secure the aircraft. So let's. Ignition. Off. Landing light. Off. Taxi light. Off. Navigation lights. 
Off. Master switch alt and bat. Off. STBY that switch. Off. Fuel selector. Ah, right here. Left or right. Okay. That shuts down the aircraft and gets it ready for the next crew or us after we go for lunch. So let's take a look outside. See that these guys got in the way. Little funny thing about uh, the graphics. Sometimes uh, these fellows here cause you a problem. You can press Shift P for a pushback. Get them to move. There. He's out of the way. And then I can end the pushback by pre pressing Shift P. 